Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a public meeting of the Indian Arts Commission Arts in the Park and Historic Sites 2019 Advisory Review Panel, Individuals Number 4. I'm Alan Platt. I'm a commissioner from Floyd's Knobs, Indiana. Today is November 9th, and we are meeting by conference call and streaming live uh, from a webinar. We welcome the applicants who may be listening in today and would like to remind you that you are muted for this review. There is no direct contact or conversation about the evaluation and disposition of applications before, during, or after the panel meeting. At this time, we would like the panelists and staff uh, who are present to introduce themselves, stating the name, occupation, and where they are from in the state. Hannah, could you start us? Hey there, my name is Hannah Lehman. I live in Goshen, Indiana, and I am um, an illustrator. I own the Crane Collective, a studio. Thank you. Stacy? Hi there, I'm Stacy Finley. I work for Columbus, Indiana Parks and Recreation. I'm the Project and Resource Development Director here. Uh, I do community engagement, fundraising, and grant writing. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Fanfare Sturry, and I am the um, Community Integration Coordinator for the Redbird Art Studio at Cardinal Services in Warsaw, Indiana. Thank you. Jesse? I'm Jesse Russett. I'm the Eastern Regional Director of Indiana Landmarks, and I'm located in Cambridge City. Welcome. Jenny? Hi, I'm Jenny Jenkins. I'm um, a Senior Special Projects Associate for the Hoosier Environmental Council, and I live in Indian Indianapolis. And Kate? Hi, I'm Kate Wiltz. I am in Bloomington and I work at Indiana University as a project manager for the Epley Institute for Parks and Public Lands. Welcome. And Anna and any staff? I'm Anna Tragesser, IAC staff. Hi, and Chapin Schnick, also IAC staff. Thank you. Uh, now we'll begin the panel review. This is how the process will work. I will announce the application we will review and ask the first reader to begin the discussion. The first reader will provide their assessment of the application based upon the evaluation criteria and their perspective. Uh, panelists, please note that the applications do not need to be recapped since everyone has read those. Uh, just provide your comments. After the first reader is finished, I will ask the second reader to likewise present any new or additional or opposing comments, uh, anything they can add that's new or different. We are not looking for consensus, just a full evaluation from the different perspectives panelists bring to the table. After the second reader is finished, I'll open up the discussion for final comments. Uh, remember, in the interest of time, we are only looking for new, additional, or opposing viewpoints. If a panelist has a conflict of interest, that panelist will be placed on hold while the application is reviewed. I don't believe we have any of those today, but if they do arise, please uh, let Anna know or myself. However, um, uh, again, so if you arrive at one of those, just let us know. Uh, finally, once uh, the application has been reviewed by the full panel, we ask that the panel update their scores in the online system you have open in front of you. It is common for scores to change as a result of this broader discussion. These scores do save automatically. So before we start, are there any questions or technical issues anyone has? Okay, hearing none, let's begin. We'll start with the application of Annabelle Hopkins. The first reader is Kate. Hi, um, I'm gonna be looking to the side because I have a second screen, so bear with me on that, please. Um, I thought that the application was um, pretty good overall. Some of the things that I think could have been stronger include the fact that she had a lot of time um, and therefore money in her budget for prep time uh, relative to some of the other applications that I read and kind of figuring that out a little bit in my head. It did seem like there was uh, more than what my field anyway typically includes as prep time for workshops and um, things like that. So um, that was really the only thing I had in terms of uh, feasibility and um, looking then at, her, at the impacts on cultural and natural resources. Um, she's doing a, a 
an, an activity with kids where they collect natural items from the park site. And that, that can be, that can lead to some considerable negative impact on the environment if it's not really carefully monitored, um, irrespective of, what, of whatever the rules might be at the park. It really needs to um, perhaps have some input from staff to ensure that the appropriate amount and type of items are collected if that's something that the park is uh, supportive of. So I, I just, that was more of a caution and a concern on my part. Um, then looking at the public benefit, um, there was no, there was no addressing of any inclusion uh, for people who, with uh, disabilities. Um, so um, it wasn't addressed directly, I guess, is, is the, my point, and it was asked for. So um, more than just holding it in an accessible site, um, I would have liked to have heard something about how to uh, reach out to underserved audiences. And also the marketing plan was um, adequate. It was good. I would suggest perhaps um, expanding that to include uh, flyers at local art supplies shops or some senior centers or wherever else her um, target audience might reside. Um, and as far as artistic quality, um, the, the resume and the pre previous uh, success with this type of program that was documented in the application related experience, I, I thought it was fantastic. So that part I, um, I really felt was a strong component. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Our second reader is Michelle. Michelle, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, uh, that the program seemed is kind of two parts. And um, if it could be more open for all ages to take place, um, because I didn't see how that was going to be separated in um, the projected summary proposal. Um, uh, there was also a note made that um, the art would be uh, given back to the site to use as a fundraiser, which I thought was a fantastic idea. I just didn't know um, how that would be communicated to the guests, and that could be kind of confusing um, when folks create art, they kind of want to take it with them. And so, um, but I really loved, loved that idea. Um, uh, under the cultural asset um, was mentioned, I think, I think creating a partnership with the naturalists, the interpreters, the environmental educators to make sure that any items removed were being just aware of um, our effects on the environment. I noted that as well. And um, in, sorry, I'm looking at this on the screen. Um, public benefits, um, more of a specific, um, I didn't, I couldn't see who the program was specifically being targeted to and what form of communication would be used to share uh, the event. And I also noted that parents were noted as supervisory kind of people in this program, but I didn't know if there was gonna be any other guides involved as well. Um, and under, and uh, artistic quality, um, I noted, uh, appre I appreciate the willingness to um, share the skills and creativity in this workshop. Um, and then maybe just speaking more to how the, how the entire workshop will be led and presented um, to lead the projects. And that's all. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, are there any additional new or opposing comments from the other panelists? All right, hearing none, will you please finalize your scores and update those on your online comments? We'll give you just a minute for that.
Great job, everyone. Thank you for sharing both um, what you felt made the application strong and specific suggestions. So thank you, great job. Okay, I know this one's our first one. So does anyone need any more time? Are we good on the scores? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the second uh, application. The applicant is Charlene Marsh. Our first reader is Stacy. Hi there. Um, I liked how she explained um, plain air painting and some of the history um, and her reasoning for uh, picking the specific parks and um, kind of the culture of the park. I like how she kind of gave that background. Um, Uh, some of my concerns would be um, the number of hours spent actually uh, interacting with participants seemed a little small. Um, and I just thought maybe the budget seemed a little inflated based on the expected number of participants. Um, it would have been nice to have seen uh, maybe more hours spent with the participants um, based on the budget. So I, I just put, I think a larger, I think offering more sessions would engage a larger, a larger audience. So those were some of my larger comments. Okay. Um, our second reader is Hannah. Hannah? There we go. Sorry. Um, so my, when I was reading through it, I think the number one thing that kind of popped up to me would have been, um, I know that a lot of the way she was going to have guests come and participate or participants come and join in was to just kind of be walking up to. Um, so I guess I should say the marketing. And I know there was mention of maybe some social media advertising, um, but events like this, I really think that, um, they sound fun and great, and I was wondering if maybe some more advertising, perhaps at like artist guilds, painter guilds, um, different places, just allowing the public to know that it's happening uh, so that they can join in rather than uh, just people kind of walking up, which I know might be the purpose. So that was kind of a question that I had. Um, other than that, I think that was my biggest concern. Okay, thank you, Hannah. Uh, all right, uh, we'll open it up to any other new additional or opposing comments from the panel. Okay, then please finalize your scores and update your online comments. All right, is everybody finished? Very good. We'll move on to uh, at the next applicant, which, which is Crystal, I don't wanna mispronounce the name, Gutlius. Um, our first reader for this application is Michelle. I actually really, uh, I, I need that. No, I don't think I had a whole lot. Um, I, I have nothing, nothing in my notes that says so. Um, as far as I was concerned, uh, it looked like the applicant put all the details in and I didn't have any questions or concerns about the program they wanted to present. So. Okay, very good, that's fine. Um, then uh, Jesse, you are a second reader for this one. I also <laughs> don't have any complaints about this application at all. I think the notion of taking the ribbons away as a, a means to 
not only reward your participants, but count your participants is a very, it's a good idea. And it's nice for the guests to be able to have a takeaway like that. I thought her marketing scheme seemed appropriate for the level of activity that she was doing. And um, the, her budget, I thought was very, very well paced out compared to some of the other applications. It seemed justified very well. So I was happy with that application. Very good. Any other uh, comments from the panel? Um, yes, actually, just because the budget came up, I had written a comment um, about the budget and it's, it's sort of, uh, I don't want it to come off too negatively um, because it, she, be, but because the applicant did such a great job of itemizing and really laying it out, I was noting that some of the supplies seemed like they were permanent um, and usable and maybe could be cost shared in a way uh, with another project or um, by the artist herself. And so I, it was just more of an observation. Okay, thank you, Kate. Anyone else? Very good, then please finalize your scores and update your comments. Anyone need any additional time? Great. We'll move on to application number four. The applicant is Destiny West, and our first reader is Jenny. Okay. Um, some of the uh, comments, or I, I came up with just a few additional questions. I thought the uh, um, the plans and the details were very well explained. Um, a few things that I noted that would have been helpful to include would have been things like the maximum number of participants, um, where the classes be held at a single location or different areas of the park, the process for registering and signing up for the classes. Um, also, will as far as the the I guess the the schedule of the classes, will they be will per, participants be permitted to attend just one or two classes? or do they have to register before, that kind of thing, more logistical. Um, and let's see, um, I really like the tie-in to nature um, and, and the classes, and they, they seem very well planned and thought out. Um, I thought it may be a little bit stronger of a tie to specifically to Lake Monroe, um, or a specific example of one of the, the painted, the planned uh, flora and fauna that would be researched um, would have been nice to hear a little bit more about. Um, I also noted to consider um, making sure that that was definitely a native species that, that was selected if you're focusing on specific flora and fauna. And then um, last thing I, that I noted is um, including, I think, the, the range of children or the range of people that could take the class. I think it was mentioned, she mentioned something about ages five and older, and I thought uh, that was maybe a little unrealistic to think that uh, five years old and older would... Uh, be good for the class, but um, also how that may affect adults wanting to take the class, whether they want that age of children in the class with them. So um, that was some of my main comments. Okay, our second reader is Kate. Uh, yeah, you covered a lot of the, the things that the thoughts that I had um, regarding the the detail on the topics, which I also thought was fantastic. Um, I wanted a better understanding of how someone would participate in just one day, or if they had to participate, you know, or if they were, it was more beneficial to participate and sign up for other days and how that would work. Um, and more detail on exactly what sites and subjects and audience clarification. I honestly, I'm looking through I thought I had more that was different, but um, I think you hit on a lot of what I had to say, so that's great. Okay, any other comments from anyone? Hearing none, please go ahead and finalize your scores and comments.
Everyone good? Excellent. We will go on to application number five, Dixie uh, Ferrer. Our first reader is Jesse. Um, I thought her budget was acceptable considering how much time that she's going to spend there. And especially since she's already had experience at the location prior. My only critique for the two day workshop, which I didn't know if it was spelled out correctly, is if you have to complete work independently on the first day that then has to be finished on the second day. And I just thought that might be difficult to get people to participate in both days. I didn't know if that would happen or not. Um, I enjoyed how she connected her artwork to the cultural significance of the site. I thought she illustrated that very well. The public benefit for it, um, I thought it was highly selective for a certain audience. I didn't think it was really reaching out at all towards any sort of underserved population. Um, so I would suggest maybe marketing a little bit more for other groups instead of just artists that, that go to that park all the time. Um, and then for artistic quality, she provided an adequate resume and it looks like it will be a good program. Thank you, Jesse. Stacy is our second reader. Hi there. Um, so I, I would have appreciated um, kind of like the benefits of why being a resident artist, what would the benefits, uh, what's the significance for doing that? What will the impact be on the audience? How, how will that change the program for her staying there for a month? I just would have um, maybe appreciate a little more explanation on how that would change the impact. Um, also, um, you know, marketing to promote inclusivity. And uh, it also, it seems like the artist based on her experience would create a positive experience uh, based on her resume and uh, past projects. I think that's all, that's all that I have to add. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, different new or opposing comments? I'd actually right. like to, this is, oh, I'd like to expand a, a tiny bit on the, um, something that was already touched on, but the, um, basically, ex sorry, marketing um, kind of outside of the, the stated um, participants that would be included for the two-day workshop, I think that it would be such an amazing, I mean, a free two-day workshop that's conducted by an experienced and talented artist. It was such an, a unique opportunity for people in the neighbor, neighborhood and community that um, I think it would be fantastic if the artist actually really went out of a way to kind of get people signed up that were not normally someone who would do it. And one example I had was uh, maybe reaching out to a local high school art teacher to see if they had a high school senior that they could recommend who's artistic and maybe doesn't have the financial resources to normally pursue their art. So it's just a, a fantastic opportunity for the community. It's what we utilize really well, I think. Thank you, good comment. Um, anything else? All right, please uh, finalize your scores and comments. Okay, we'll move on to application number six, Edward Byrne. Hannah is our first reader. Okay, um, one moment here. So I felt um, this applicant was very, very like well thought out. Um, it seemed as though like any information that we requested was like super thorough. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of concerns with it. Um, I enjoyed that there were like multiple ways to en engage with the audience as far as people actually taking the nature hikes and then also being able um, to go to the exhibits and view the photographs that were taken. Uh, the only concern that I did have was, and maybe I missed it, I feel like I read it over and over, uh, was just how how do people sign up for um, like these these like nature hikes uh, that are guided by the naturalist. Uh, but other than that, like I said, I thought it was like super well thought out. 
um, and like just a really um, lovely program. Thank you, Jenny. You're our second reader. Yes, I, I feel like also it was a very, very uh, well answered to all of the questions. The only thing that I had um, was that the inclusion specifically of underserved populations was not addressed. So I would have liked to see that addressed. Um, I, I would have liked to see it addressed. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Um, I was just, I, I love the idea uh, of incorporating physical activity with art. I also love the idea of highlighting Indiana Dunes since they're such a resource, I feel like, to uh, Indiana. That's nice that it kind of captured that, that, um, that asset. So that's all. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else for anyone, please just finalize your scores and comments. Don't feel, don't feel rushed. If you do have a comment, um, jump in there. Does anyone need more time? Okay, we'll turn to applicant number seven, James Moriarty. Our first reader is Kate. Uh, I really liked this application. Um, I felt like it was very strong in a couple of the areas, specifically um, the evaluation was very well um, articulated and useful. And so often you see um, that kind of being, eh, we'll just, you know, ask people if they had a good time at the end. So I really wanted to call that out because I feel like that gets a little bit of a short change sometimes. Um, also, the um, looking at the feasibility, which includes the budget, um, it looks like he's, this has been done before um, at this location. And um, in light of that, I thought perhaps the research and curriculum design component of the budget was a little high um, because presumably it just needs to be updated rather than created whole cloth. Um, the other things, let me see if I have any other comments in that. Um, oh, I did think that another improvement that could be made to the application would be um, maybe having available some adaptive technology and equipment for those with disabilities. Um, it just would be a great addition, especially since it does have this component of, of a lecture and a, and he's handing, he's providing some uh, lenses. It would be neat to see something uh, more specifically to address accessibility and inclusion. Um, the partnering with uh, a naturalist to provide information about the site and really tie that back to the cultural and natural resources. I also thought that was uh, very well done. And um, displaying the participants art, I, that to me, if I saw that on any of these, I was like extra bonus, you know, because that's an amazing way to connect people and visitors to the site. So that um, I also thought was really uh, a great asset to the application. Thank you. Our second reader is Hannah. Um, I think really the only thing I have to add to that was I felt like potentially um, there is a better way, not a better, just a different way to reach out other than just social media, which I think is like really valuable, uh, but really heavily dependent on is just maybe, again, like reaching out to different schools or guilds, um, just any type of like art community um, to like have those conversations that these types of programs are happening. You might get um, a different like age group or something like that if you would do it that way. Um, and I think that was all I had to add. Thanks, Hannah. Any other comments? All right. Well, we'll move on to finalizing your scores and your comments. OK, 
Okay, application number eight, Joanne Massey. First reader is Michelle. Michelle, you're probably still on mute, I think. Okay, can you hear me? There you go. Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, well, one, I really, I really kudos to the thought of this program um, uh, to improve and making purchases to items they already have in existence um, that aren't being used. And um, I love the idea of obviously having a working kiln um, in a uh, public place that more people can have access to it. Um, so um, I didn't really have a whole lot. Um, I don't think, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot. I, I really supported this program. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Jesse is our second reader. I also really liked how they budgeted it out to fix the kiln that they currently had. Um, I know that's quite an expense for a single item that will be used later, but that's also why I like it because they're using their funds really smart and sustainably to be able to take their art program from not just right now, but to extend it into the future. So I, I thought that was really great. Um, and then I also enjoyed that they're, they're doing um, pottery at Angel Mounds. I think that's a wonderful connection to that site and hopefully it can illustrate that element of history for people that are, are visiting that site in the future. Um, beyond that, I thought it seemed feasible. They've thought it out and they've got quotes for everything. So that was wonderful. Um, and I think their marketing strategy was fine. And I think over time, they will be able to serve underrepresented groups a little bit more. Um, I didn't see where they were directly marketing. I might have missed that um, towards any underserved populations. But I think over time with having that installation there that they would be able to. So that's all I had. Thank you. Any other new or different comments? I have a uh question comment <laughs> and uh -huh. because, because it affected the score I gave I, I really was wondering um, did anyone else find an an inaccuracy in the budget portion um, and I did okay spe <laughs> specifically I was confused by student fees appearing as um, an expense when it's income um, is that is that of a concern to anyone or was that i just I, had a hard, I didn't understand are they charging student fees i i didn't understand that part either yeah i think it was missed, it was it was improperly listed under an expense whereas it, it should be an income not an expense so it does kind of um, mess up the budget as far as the accuracy of it okay Okay, well, and mm. okay, so I'm keeping mine the same because that that concerns me. Um, it didn't really make sense to do that. Cool, okay. thank you. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts or comments? Yeah, just one more thing on the budget. I thought also, in addition to the seven thousand, or I'm sorry, the four thousand dollars student fee um, error. It would be helpful to know where the numbers from utilities came from, as well as miscellaneous, just kind of a breakdown of what those are. Okay, if you'll all uh, finalize your scores and comments, please.
so we are halfway through. Um, thank you all for the clear and concise comments. As those are always very helpful. And um, But I wanted to check to see if anyone needed to take a break. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on. Number nine is Melissa Parrott Quimby. Our first reader is Stacy. I, um, I kind of struggled with this one because um, the explanation of the, like the return of investment of the participants, like what is the ultimate goal? What are, what are they, uh, what are they kind of striving to achieve um, with this? Uh, a collage seems like a, such a simple concept. So it's like, how, how does this project uh, set itself aside from, I guess, just other, I guess it just seemed, um, it seemed, I, I feel like the, the budget seemed pretty inflated for uh, the content. And I think an explanation of, of how the class was gonna impact the participants. Um, yeah, and maybe just more explanation of the content. And then, uh, and then also just the one day of many sessions, what, what is going to be the long-term, I guess what's gonna be the long-term, I, I feel like this one just really needed a little more explanation, a little more history, a little more um, what, she, what they were trying to achieve. Okay, thank you. Our second reader is Jenny. Um, yeah, I, I think more explanation is, is the majority of my comments are that's where that's based from um, description of the actual art project that will be taught um, and more specifics for the day of the event and how many classes are going to be offered, how many participants, um, will each class throughout the day be the same and the budget size really did not seem appropriate for a one day activity. Um, it seemed, it just seemed not appropriate for one day activity. Um, I also um, have as a comment is that the, the project could include a much stronger site connection. Um, it could really be conducted at just about any of the listed sites. And I know that was a big um, thing in some of the webinar series about, you know, not being able to pick up the project and drop it into any park. And it felt like this one didn't have a strong connection to site. Um, and let's see, um, let's see, target audience. Um, it would have been helpful to have the target audience addressed, um, as well as more specifics in the marketing plan, um, kind, what kind of social media, what local publications, et cetera. Um, and I think some of the links that were listed for um, marketing that was, for the marketing plan, excuse me, um, let's see, oh, such as the, Park County Sentinel, Park County Visitors Bureau, some of those are not places that are actually willing to advertise projects like these. So I felt like a little more research and planning would have been beneficial for this. All right, Jenny, thanks. Any other comments? I also noted, um, just kind of that question of how stating how they will be working closely with park staff to uh, pull off this program. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? All right, finalize your scores and comments. We'll move on to number 10. Applicant is Michael Bever. Our first reader is Jesse. I thought this, um, the feasibility for the project seemed reasonable. He appears to have done this quite a bit in the past. I liked that the project was designed so that the first day activities was not reliant on the second day's worth of activities. 
So people can either come to both or they can go to one um, and not feel like they lost out on any of the elements of the presentation. So I thought that was good. I really loved how he tied the artwork into the natural environment. I thought he did an excellent job of that. And it's something that I have not, I mean, I know nature bubbles are in nature, but I just never really thought about it as an art form. So I think that was excellent. Um, I think it would be interesting because so many of the things that he listed off that made bubbles were water creatures that were both terrestrial and aquatic. I think it would be really interesting for him to um, kind of talk about the myth of those creatures, traditional myth of those creatures when he's interpreting these sites, not just focus on the natural element, because um, a lot of traditional cultures will think that they're, you know, connected to the underworld of some sort. So I think that would be really, really neat to mix in there as well. Um, <clears throat> for the public benefit and community impact, I think it's a very engaging activity. So I, I think he did very well on that. Um, I would extend my marketing somewhat because it seems like all they're going to attract are people that are already at the park um, and happen to it. So maybe increase the marketing to get other groups like high schools or um, local schools around there to participate in it as well. And um, I think he explained the, the connection and the significance of this, this piece really well. Thank you. Our second reader is Michelle. I also affirm the program idea, um, really appreciated the teaching elements of connecting the classroom to uh, the outdoors um, and the connecting it to actual uh, living elements in nature uh, with the bubbles. Um, 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 I am grateful to have had the explanations that were given um, and the reflections that were given through the bubbles and the shapes. Um, I thought that was impressive and um, I uh, also the appreciation for lessening our human impact being mentioned and uh, as a part of the program. Um, I did note that maybe with the marketing, communicating with schools in the area could be another way to communicate um, the audience for uh, bringing in um, a group of folks. Okay, yeah, thank you. Great, thanks, Michelle. Any other comments? I really like. Whoops. Go ahead. I, I really, sorry. <laughs> I, I really like um, I really liked how this uh, this program would be an inclusive program how it could really be marketed uh, for folks with sensory disabilities and then also how it could really be a family engagement activity it's and it's family friendly so I liked I liked how it could really uh, it could really be a program for anyone and everyone. I wanted to suggest that um, they're making postcards and it would be really cool to have um, a nice addition of perhaps um, mailing the postcards, the ability to send them uh, straight from the park. And that could also kind of expand the influence to uh, a different audience. Okay. Anyone um, else? I, I actually, okay. <laughs> yeah, go um, ahead. One of the things I, I had was that um, since the Indiana Dunes is in the high demand category for the art projects, um, I didn't feel like this project had a strong enough connection to that particular site besides the fact that it's historically been done there. Um, so I thought it might be better to offer it at another site that, that really needed some artists to come in and do these kinds of things. Um, another thing that I was not clear on why the artist would break up the pre presentation into two separate days. I agree with the earlier commenters that said, you know, it was nice that you could drop into either one, but I also don't see the purpose of it being at two separate days. I think it could have all been done in one day. 
and that would also eliminate the need for the overnight lodging. Um, and to be honest, I, I I know that area pretty well. I've never, well, I shouldn't say I've never. There are very few lodges, overnight accommodations that cost $250. I think the average is around $100, and that's high end on a peak season. So um, that seems a little bit strange to me. Um, there's also, I mean, just in the budget, the project expense detail lists mileage for two round trips, but there was no uh, addressing of where the second trip was coming from um, in the in the actual written area. Um, one other thing that I just, as far as the answering the questions, I, I agree. I love the two bubbles, or the two examples of the bubbles with the natural world. Um, but they were written kind of in the introduction, but they were never mentioned again throughout the rest of the application. So I would love to see um, that that was in fact going to be part of some of the presentation itself. Oh, and then one last thing was marketing plan without relying on the park staff would be nice because I believe it was stated that to not rely on the park staff and, and that sounded like um, most of it would be done with the staff, so. Okay, very good. Additional comments, everyone. Um, all right, if there's nothing else, we'll finalize our scores and comments on number 10. A lot of extra comments were bubbling up on that one. Sorry, that's the only one of the day. <laughs> okay, we will start number 11. Our applicant is Rebecca Stockard. Our first reader is Jenny. Okay, um, let's see. I, I again appreciated a lot of the attention to detail and explanation and, and addressing every question. Um, one thing I noted was that there was a little confusion or an error with the um, project expense detail field um, where it says artwork donation to GSP SHS for 250. And I believe this is in the budget. Let me get back down to that. Um, I, I'm, I'm not clear. Oh, I, I'm sorry. So it should be listed as an in kind donation instead of where it was listed. Um, and I'm also not clear on SHS for $200 or GSP SHS for $200 of the cash donation. That was my note. So, um, and the $5 per participant supply fee should be listed under income instead of expense. Um, and then I said with these adjustments, the project expense detail has a difference of $450 with the income detail. Um, if I'm understanding it correctly, and I couldn't quite make it balanced, so I think it would be good for maybe the artist to look at that a little closer, if I'm not misunderstanding it myself. Um, and then the other comments I had were your point that royal, rural communities do not always have the same access to the arts as urban is very true. I hope you make a concerted effort to reach out to the locals in the rural community that aren't already a part of the art community. That would be wonderful, and maybe you can think of some other ways specifically to market your workshop to other industry populations in the area. And that is what I love. I'm gonna um, jump in and clarify something that is definitely confusing. I acknowledge it's very confusing. Um, the in-kind, the definition that we use for in-kind um, is one that the National Endowment for the Arts asks us to use. And so I know this is probably not intuitive, but um, in this case, in kind is anything that is contributed to the project by anyone other than the applicant. So um, I don't know. I only also know what's in the application here. And but the art donation, she could be considering that as personal contribution, and therefore it actually doesn't fit as an in kind item based on that definition. Uh -huh. Thank you, Anna. That helps. Okay, our second reader is Kate. Uh, yeah, I really liked this one. I thought the connection to the site and the site uh, messages 
was extraordinary and notable. And I liked the idea of engaging local um, audiences and um, hoping that that was uh, articulated well enough. The marketing um, efforts, I thought, um, she just did a little bit more than the average uh, mark in the marketing and has some creative approaches. So really, I I uh, don't have much else to add. I don't think. Okay, thanks, Kate. Um, any other comments, new or different from anyone? So I I kind of struggled with the budget. I didn't understand having both lodging and mileage. Um. And then I, I could have, I would have appreciated a narrative explaining the benefit of the residency. Is the, resi is the residency benefiting the artist or the participants? And how so, how is the, how are, is the residency benefiting uh, both? Um, and then there was one more thing. And then also who's the target audience? And how will this marketing promote this event to an inclusive audience for my concerns. Thanks, Stacy. Anyone else? Okay, go ahead and finalize your scores and comments, please. All right, we'll move on to applicant 12, Sandra Goldsby. Our first reader is Hannah. Okay, I had um, just a few different uh, discrepancies. I wasn't quite sure uh, some of the things that she was saying. First one I caught was um, she had requested $1,500 in the, um, for the grant and then but the expenses were adding up to $793. And so I just couldn't quite tell if I was uh, reading something incorrectly or what that was about. Um, another one uh, was just kind of the targeted audience um, as far as if it was going to be like locals, if she was going to be um, like targeting vacationers, um, just maybe a little bit more clarification with that. Um, another thing I caught was that she was going to leave the marketing up to the park department. Um, and as we said before, I think it was mentioned that um, that's up to uh, the requester. And so I didn't know if there was potentially um, a good conversation that she had had with the park department that they're willing to do marketing for her, how that worked, and maybe just a little more clarification would have been nice. Um, what else do I have here? Um, also, at one point, it was mentioned that um, this was a summer camp project with the park. So then I was kind of confused with the funding uh, because if it was a state park summer camp, I would assume that they would be funding this project. Uh, so again, just maybe some clarification with that. Um, and then also uh, the letter of uh, recommendation uh, wasn't what I believe to be what we were looking for. So those are kind of the things I was um, noticing. All right, thank you. Stacy is our second reader. Um, okay. So I thought it was a unique class idea. Um, and I also thought um, that this would be a great addition to their parks department offerings. Um, and smaller class size have limitations as far as total impact, but I think it would be a memorable a memorable experience for the participants. That's all. All right, thank you. Any other comments? I actually, I, I think that, that sorry. <laughs> I think I love the idea of the sand casting. That is a, a type of art that isn't done very often um, anymore. Um, I do think a closer attention to the, each of the questions actually asked would improve the application and maybe an idea um, 
would be having a friend or a colleague read through the application before submitting it, and I think that would fix some of the, you know, the questions that weren't addressed. Um, and one thing is, is that I mentioned to consider uh, with if being custom to get a, a unique opportunity, um, but is to maybe instead of using the colored shells and colored, I forget exactly what it was, colored stones, um, maybe trying to uh, include representations of local native natural objects instead of, you know, brightly colored items that, that aren't found in nature or aren't found necessarily here in Indiana. Okay. Um, anyone else? Michelle, did you have a comment? Yeah, I also um, affirm the of the sand casting. Um, I wasn't uh, sure of the reality of guests returning a second day um, to complete the project, so I wondered um, about how that invitation would be um, made to return or uh, made sure people understood that. Um, I also had asked the question, I couldn't kind of um, locate if they would be working directly with a naturalist um, and doing any, uh, you know, sand education or anything like that to explain why this type of art uh, is important. Um, I noted that I appreciate the fact that they uh, would be working individually with each student. Um, but I didn't quite know how realistic that would be depending on class size because I didn't see um, anything noting that. Uh, I had questions about who the program would be reaching out to for attending. Um, and just noted maybe uh, more thought into marketing um, and partnership with the Parks Department during the summer program. It was kind of like a question that I also had. Um, I didn't understand that um, if it was in conjunction with it. Um, and then just noting um, the evaluation process, uh, what would that look like? Thank you. Anyone else? Sorry if you already brought it up, but I just wanted to um, follow up on your earlier questions about a statement of support. And you guys are correct. This document she submitted as a statement of support um, really doesn't meet the requirements or information we need for that. So um, if this project uh, is recommended by you based on what it has here, um, then we'll work with the applicant to figure out how to meet that requirement if we can't meet that requirement. But uh, again, all of your review is still based on what you see here in the application. Um, I just had one other thing to throw out there. It really was unclear to me that the applicant understood the difference between the Indiana Dunes National Park and the Indiana Dunes State Park. Um, it seemed to be confusing the two locations when describing where events might take place. And I understand there's a partnership and that kind of thing, but um, I think that's particularly important. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, please finalize your scores and comments. All right, we'll move on to application number 13. Stacy Sam is the applicant. Kate is our first reader. Um, cute name. The, uh, this application um, was uh, very high on, on kind of the time, the engagement amount of uh, the number of days was I think seven days and each day she's going to do something twice so I think that's um, that's a, a kind of a good bang for your buck kind of thing in terms of um, exposure to um, an interaction a potential interaction anyway with visitors um, 
And the opportunity to enter the community's art show uh, was also kind of a neat um, way to expand on the benefit to the public. Um, I would have liked a, a little bit more description on the specific subjects that were going to be painted and their connection to the natural and cultural features of the site. Um, I didn't feel like that was something that was particularly well articulated. Um, and um, Oh, and the resume that was submitted seemed uh, rather incomplete um, and uh, didn't really make the case for um, for her experience, which I, I'm, I'm sure she has, but I just felt like it would be, um, it would have benefited from a little bit of stronger uh, resume. Um, that I believe is all I have. All right, our second lead is Jesse. My only concern with it was when she was talking about how she's going to draw people into a, a free workshop. I was wondering how she was going to do that and if she was just relying on people showing up the day of and what level of commitment people would have to coming to the workshop. So I was just thinking maybe if she had some sort of register system where people actually had to register for the class, they might be more committed to coming to the class. All right. Any other comments? I do. Um, um, one thing that w when we talk about um, eligibility or requirements that you know they had to turn certain things in, one thing I noticed is that it specifically says um, under artist resume, be certain that resume includes artist statement, and um, there was no artist statement on this resume. Um, I also, under artistic quality, it would have been helpful to see some artwork that the artists themselves did. Um, since there wasn't a lot listed in the resume for that. The Facebook um, page that where the link was listed was specifically for the classes, the previous classes. So um, it's so unclear to me that the artist herself what um, you know, and it didn't get to see any of her artwork. Um, I also uh, thought it a little bit more detail for the planning uh, or details for the classes themselves, how long they would last, um, what specifically will the subjects be for each class, when are the class dates, what, what campers is the artist referring to? I think a few times in there they're listed as campers, and I'm assuming that means that the people that sign up for the art classes, but that was unclear. Um, and as far as the budget, I, it was because of the amount of classes that are offered, which which is, uh, I think as somebody said earlier, a great bang for your buck. Um, there are quite a few. But when I broke down the budget, um, basically there's the potential for 210 participants to, to be taking these classes. And then if you kind of divide that out in, under the budget for $600 for canvases, and then I think $200 was listed for snacks and drinks. It just doesn't seem un it doesn't seem realistic or feasible um, to do because unless there's other money coming in, um, that breaks down to a pretty minor amount to be used for those. Um, I also thought that there could be a lot stronger connection to the site to Shackamack specifically. Um, and this is where maybe a, a listing of the planned subjects for each class would be a lot more helpful to uh, help the reviewer understand um, what the artist intended, artist's intended significance to the site is beyond just being a convenient location. Um, more focus could be put on the history um, or, or natural areas of the park. Um, I noted that uh, I think in, in some of the ones maybe last year, the American flags and pumpkins were being um, painted and that just doesn't seem like that's uh, you know maybe more appropriate project or subjects could be used um, in each class to actually connect to the parks like a large oak or a native plant perhaps um, and it was also unclear to me whether the art the students would actually get a chance to see the subject if they are in fact painting an actual subject there was a statement 
um, as a quote was, after they arrive and put on their aprons, I'll show them the subject. We will be painting and location of the subject in the park for them to see at a later date, if not that same day. And that sentence just kind of threw me off because it's not even clear to me whether this they'll be able to view the subject of the painting or if they're just going to be in a um, shelter somewhere and kind of told, oh, there's something in this park and here it is and this is what we're painting. So that was didn't seem very well thought out. Um, and that's what I had. Okay. Anyone else? All right, go ahead and finalize your scores and comments, please. All right, moving on to applicant number 14, Steve Polston. Our first reader is Michelle. I am here. Okay. Um, so on the feasibility, I noted um, just um, informing us of how many adults, children, uh, and children would be able to participate. Um, the cultural aspect or cultural asset and natural environment impact. Um, I noted that I see that um, his resume work did include with the DNR, but can you ensure how the visitors will understand the impact um, or not impacting their surroundings while engaging in photography? As um, we all know, we only look certain directions when we're involved in stuff. Um, I have noted under public benefit and community impact, um, maybe to push uh, the marketing strategy um, to uh, think of other opportunities to advertise schools, photography clubs, camps. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Michelle. Hannah is our second reader. Okay, the only note I really have about this one is um, for the marketing as well, uh, just that it would be great to do some advertising other than just through the park and the park's Facebook. Um, potentially like reaching into community centers, school, summer programs, library, summer programs, just to kind of pass that information that this is happening along to other families. Um, I also noted that um, I thought it was like pretty well thought out. It seemed like uh, he had done this before. And then at one point, oh, let me find it. Where did I put this? I just noted something about um, the numbers and him depending on the park staff and knowing the potential um, number of people coming if and if he had already had that conversation with people or if he was just assuming that they would know. So that was all I had. All right. Anyone else have a new or additional comments? I do. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. Um, okay. Um, it, there, there were some, a lot of details that were very, uh, or that were left unclear to me. Um, a breakdown or a detailed schedule of the events on June and June first and June second would have been really helpful to um, better understand the plans for the grant. Um, to me, it just wasn't clear whether it was an all-day workshop or multiple workshops offered throughout the day. Is June second an expansion of the prior day's event? Or will it be okay if visitors who attend didn't attend the previous day? So that was just kind of unclear. Um, also, a breakdown of the expenses for the cameras and the film and supplies would have been helpful um, to understand how many potential participants are being provided for or planned for um, and what the maximum amount of participants, um, you know, that could participate is, you know, included in the budget. Um, I also... Um, 
I would have uh, liked to hear a little more thoughts on the in intended audience, um, either whether it was via historical statistics from the previous years, or at least clearly defining who you want to target specifically to draw to your event. Um, inclusion of underserved populations wasn't addressed. Um, a more thorough marketing plan would have been helpful. And um, a more quantitative project evaluation that would actually include some numbers would have been helpful um, if that's a requirement by the IIC. Um, it just uh, tracking the audience directly engaged in the project really wasn't addressed. And then uh, the artist statement was also not included on the resume for this one. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> All right. Please uh, finalize your scores and comments on number 14. All right, application 15, Tamara Brown, our first uh, reader is Stacy. Um, I like how the, art the artist will travel to various parks and work with each park's naturalist to determine um, the best location and uh, some information about that particular setting. And I think that it has um, the possibility to reach a large audience. Um, I also kind of feel like this is a this is a pretty good bang for the buck bang. Um, and then I just I thought that marketing uh, for this event would be key to reaching um, its potential large audience. And that's all. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, Jenny is our second reader. Okay, yeah, I thought this was a very well written and uh, well planned grant proposal. I like the idea of it spanning multiple years and multiple grants. Um, it's, it's a really creative idea, I think, to uh, visit multiple parks. And um, I like the interactions with the park staff and the park visitors. And um, and it seems like the artist is, is paying particular attention to the individual character of each park. Um, the only thing that I had was more of a challenge than a um, than a, I guess, critique, and that was um, maybe this year is um, trying to increase as much as possible the artist's reach or your project's reach to underserved populations. I believe it was addressed in the answers, but uh, maybe even uh, expanding that. Um, maybe you could challenge yourself to come up with ways that you could increase your target marketing to those populations um, that are underserved as maybe an offshoot of the marketing that, that you're already doing. So that was it. Alrighty. Um, anyone else have a comments on number 15? I was going to say that um, since you're ending the tour at Mound State Park, and that's a fairly significant Native American site, that uh, if her goal is for public outreach and to incorporate people, it'd be very nice to invite that affiliated group of uh, Native Americans to the event or to participate in some manner. Anyone else? Okay, let's finalize our scores and comments. And before we get started on the next one, uh, Vicki Bartimans, and we addressed it in the pre-panel meeting, but as you pointed out, um, her statement of support does not quite meet the requirements that we've asked for. And so just like the other one, if she is recommended based on what is existing right now, then we will um, work with her to see if there's a way that we can, that she can uh, meet those requirements. Okay, we're halfway through everybody. I'm no, just kidding. We got one left. Uh, number 16. Our applicant is Vicki Vardaman. Our first reader is Jesse. Although I think her budget lines up with a year's worth of visits to the park, um, I don't really feel like we're getting much out of this project. It seems like it's 
more self-serving than it is engaged with the public at all. Um, I think the, the artwork sounds interesting and I think the product would be very interesting in the long run, but I don't really see any opportunity to engage visitors at the park, taking them out there, um, showing them the process of this. It seems like if it happens, it happens, but we're not really going to advertise that as an activity. Um, so I think that is a concern for me. Um, let's see. Actually, that was really just the main concern. I think the price is fine, but you need to be pitching it towards an audience, not just a product in the end. All right, thank you, Jesse. Stacy is our second reader. Um, I like the explanation of Earth art. I also, um, the way that this project engages the various senses to um, potentially reach a larger audience. Um, I also uh, like the way that the artists will be using the natural environment. Um, it just, it, and the idea just seemed really unique to me. All right, thank you. Anyone else have comments? Nobody else? I, I, I do. I do. Okay, please, Jenny. Yep. Go ahead, then you guys go ahead, because that, yeah, go ahead first. Okay, um, well, my only thing was it's, it's building on the um, kind of engagement more at some I was looking for it just now I didn't find it but at some point I think she mentioned something about trying to locate the different sites and that begs for like a kind of a scavenger hunt activity that can be really incorporated you know day of week of where you know would, um, could you know the park could use this to engage the visitors with the art um, so I just wanted to throw that out there because it it has some potential, it just wasn't fully developed. I also want to note that um, I saw where sh the plan is to do this exhibit with the photography that um, is taken in a local gallery area, but I wondered if um, the artwork couldn't be exhibited in the park in which it took place as well. All right. Anyone else? Hey, hey okay, I, I do. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, go. Okay. Uh, th there was a mention, I think, in the in a few of the answers about a traveling show that will be available through the state, and that was unclear to me what that was. Um, it, it, yeah, I just I wasn't quite sure. It wasn't really address exactly what traveling art show was going on. Um, and also the um, specific uh, connection to site to me wasn't very well addressed, but Mountain State Park versus any others. Um, the, um, I, I think the overall project of moving and removing items in, from the natural landscape is something that most parks are not going to uh, find, you know, look positively on. Um, even if it's just moving items, sometimes that can create issues, whether it's removing a rock from a stream bed that could cause, you know, lead to erosion. I mean, I think most parks are not um, very, uh, you know, open to the idea of, of visitors coming in and, and moving things around or taking them from. Um, the other thing, too, it wasn't really clear to me whether the artists intend to only use items found within the park or if they were bringing them in. Um, I know the flyer for last year that in showed maybe some of the examples that they used. Um, it included coleus, which is one of the plants that we use, as well as I think a sun, it was around the sunflower, and that's a non-native species. So um, it's not found in our natural environment as far as within the park. Um, so I was a little bit confused if that was one of the things like last year, where that came from. Um, and yes, that was, that was it. Okay. Uh, please finalize your scores and comments on number 16. I'm sure Anna will have some uh, final comments, but I would just like to thank you all for all your work and efforts. 
Um, on behalf of the commissioners, we're always so impressed with these panels and how hard you work and prepare for these and the great comments you share. Um, it really means a lot, both for the work that the commission does and for the individual artists. Uh, this concludes the Arts in the Parks and Historic Sites 2019 Individuals Number 4 Advisory Review Panel, and I would like to thank all of you. Anna? Thank you. Okay.